Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to A Slice of Heaven Homestead. My name is Melanie. Today, I would like to talk to you about butternut squash. Now butternut squash are categorized as a winter squash. This does not mean that you want to plant it in the winter and it grows in the winter. It actually thrives in the summertime. Now a summer squash is like a zucchini and a yellow squash. They have a very thin rind on the outside and they basically have to be eaten fairly quickly or they will start to rot. However, that is not the case with winter squash, like butternut squash, acorn squash, even pumpkin. Winter squash develop a really thick rind on the outside, which protects it, and it can last up to 12 months. I've had it last actually a little bit longer than that, as long as it's kept in a cool, dry place, like a pantry or a dry garage. When you fertilize your butternut squash, you want to fertilize it with a good balanced fertilizer. Just work it into the soil and it's good to water it in with a little bit of Epsom salt solution. That's about one tablespoon of Epsom salt to one gallon of water. Now make sure you do that sparingly, maybe once a month, no more than that, um, otherwise you risk over salting your soil which will eventually kill your plants. Now butternut squash are a vining plant. They do really well on the ground but they are awesome on a trellis. I have mine growing up a trellis. This is a six foot trellis with another four feet going across and they are all starting to come down and I've weaved them across a few times over here so my butternut squash vines are at least 12 feet long and they are continuing to grow. Vining them up a trellis keeps them off of the ground. It helps to protect them from diseases. It also helps to keep them away from little critters or in my case curious little kids. Now the vines do get heavy, so you have to make sure that your trellis is very sturdy. I've got a half inch thick, kind of a metal fiberglass pole. Um, and sporadically along the way, every two feet or so, I've got some smaller, smaller sticks just to stabilize it a little bit. I have used this nylon mesh that's I think about four inches by four inches and that seems to work pretty well but I also used some of this plastic six inch by six inch mesh on the top and that seems to be just fine um, if your butternut squash look to be getting fairly big um, you can always hammock them with some uh, plastic mesh and tie them to a sturdier pole to give them a little bit more support. Now here in Japan summertime is their typhoon season and for you on the East Coast uh, yeah it's a lot like a hurricane. Um, hurricane force winds, lots of rain, the works. So I did have to go through and add some support um, I added some support to my trellis to keep it from blowing over because the winds can be very severe 
and when your plants are loaded down with water and wind it's a recipe for disaster if they are not properly secured. Now I don't know about any of you guys but I get super excited when I see a brand new little baby butternut squash on my plant. Now this has not been fertilized yet. I will have to go through and hand fertilize this. And I'll show you a quick clip of me fertilizing a baby butternut squash from about five days ago. So here I have a baby butternut squash. This is a female flower. You can see the, the bit right here that looks like it's, well, a mini butternut squash with the flower. Um, it needs pollen from one of the male flowers. That just has a small stem with flower. Um, this male flower is the one that has the pollen in it and typically pollinators will latch on to some of that pollen and then find their way over to the female flower. However, here in Japan, and I'm not sure if this is just in our area or everywhere, I have not seen any honeybees. Um, I've seen very few pollinators. So what I am going to do is take a little paintbrush, uh, get some pollen from the male flowers, and just go ahead and open this up and get some pollen in there to fertilize it so that we can grow another butternut squash. So I got some of the pollen off of one of my male flowers. Try and do this one handed here. Brush it all over on the inside. And that's it. That should be enough pollen. Get that baby growing. This is that butternut squash now. As you can see, they get huge in a very small amount of time. They do take several weeks to mature though. So you gotta be patient. Now here is an example of a couple of them that I hand pollinated about three days ago and they're at least four inches long now. Now butternut squash, they love the full sun and they love the heat. They do however need to be well watered. When you water your butternut squash, be sure not to put water directly on the leaves. Uh, that will promote powdery mildew and scorching. So when you water them, just water directly into the soil. During the heat of the day, you might notice that your leaves are wilting a bit. Don't worry, don't panic. That's just the plant's way of conserving water until it gets cooler. They will bounce back in the cool of the evening. Now I have harvested a few different butternut squash from our plants so far, and this is only early August. This one is just about ready to be picked. Let me pull it through here. It still has just a tiny, tiny bit of green to the skin right here, but that stem is starting to turn a little brown, and that's what you want to see before you harvest. Also, the skin color is going to turn a nice, kind of nutty, tannish orange color. That's when you know it's just about right. This one over here still has quite a ways to go. It's very green. So I'm just going to let that one alone and watch it grow. Now here in Japan, we had a seriously wet June and July. It was cloudy and rained every day for about a month and a half. 
Um, the butternut squash plants kind of suffered a little bit through that. I did have to prune off a whole bunch of leaves. Um, they got powdery mildew, which luckily I don't, I don't see any powdery mildew right now. Um, to identify that, it would be little tiny white, well, powdery looking circles on your leaves, um, top and underneath. But since the weather has dried out a bit, I have not seen that. Now when I did have the powdery mildew problem, I did treat all of my leaves with a solution of about a half a cup to three fourths of a cup of hydrogen peroxide mixed in with a gallon of water. I treated that for several days, just spraying once a day, treated that for several days, and that eventually killed the powdery mildew on all of my leaves. Now don't be afraid to prune off any yellow, dying, or disease-ridden leaves. That will actually make your plant healthier. It will help the plant to send nutrients um, to the fruit and into making other healthier leaves. Now during those very wet couple of months, I did have to prune a whole bunch of leaves away from the powdery mildew and um, other diseases that it was starting to get. But now it's a very, very healthy plant. As you can see, lots of good growth. It's producing a lot more fruit than it was before. Now some of you may be thinking, you know, it looks great, but what do I do with the butternut squash? Actually, there's a couple different things that you can do. They are delicious as a replacement to mashed potatoes. You cook them just like you would mashed potatoes. You would peel it, chop it up into little cubes, boil it for a few minutes until it gets tender, drain off that extra water, load it up with a little bit of butter and garlic salt, and it is delicious. Now the fruit of the butternut squash, it is a little bit sweeter. It, it has a very um, slightly nutty, but very sweet flavor to it. I have used butternut squash as a replacement for pumpkin in a pumpkin pie recipe. And to be quite honest, I couldn't tell the difference between a pumpkin pie and a butternut squash pie. Now another great way to eat butternut squash is to bake it. Now, you take a butternut squash, you slice it right down the middle, scoop out those seeds, lay them with the cut side up on a baking sheet, preheat oven to 350 degrees or so. Um, you wanna coat the top of that, the butternut squash. You wanna coat the top of the butternut squash with a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper and bake that for about an hour in the oven. It is so good. Now I've also seen recipes where they have sprinkled cinnamon, nutmeg, and brown sugar over top of it. So there are a ton of ways that you can eat butternut squash. So get out there, look up some recipes, and try it. You won't be sorry. So guys, thank you for joining me today. Spread a little kindness and encourage one another today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And until next time, we hope you find your slice of heaven too.